Hey friends, so today we're going to talk about a few nuggets, a few things as it relates to preparing for Bible study. Um, and these are nuggets that can help guide you with your personal Bible study, your group Bible study, or um, your quiet time. So let's get started. So the first nugget is prayer. Prayer is super, super, super important. We need to be mindful of opening our Bible studies um, with prayer. So before we even begin, we need to pray and seek God. We need to pray before the Bible study and be open and prayerful during the Bible study. And this goes for your personal Bible study, um, if it's a group setting, and even during your quiet time. You definitely want to be open to prayer. Um, you want to make sure you're asking and seeking God about what topics it is for you to study, what books to use, what programs you need to use, what videos to watch, um, to use as a resource during your your Bible study time. You definitely want to make sure that you invite God into that process. Um, and you may ask, well, why do we need to do that? Uh, because this time is a special time and we don't want to waste this time. We have to know what God is saying to us. We want to be in the right place, in the right time, and in the right setting to receive God's blessing and anointing through his word. That's why prayer is so important. So remember, you definitely want to make sure that you are open to prayer. You're very prayerful when you go into your personal Bible study. So Nugget 2 discusses choosing a Bible translation. So we need to be able to use a good Bible translation for reference. Some examples are the NIV, um, which is the New International Version, the KJV, which is the King James Version, um, the NKJV, which is the New King James Version, the English Standard Translation, um, and the Message, the Message Bible, and there's plenty of more um, out there. So you want to use one that's comfortable for you, for you to understand. Right now, I use the NIV. Um, that's what we use at church, and that's what I use during my study time. But the reason why you need to get um, a Bible translation in which you're comfortable with is because... We need to be able to understand clearly what God is saying to us. Um, and the word should basically leap off the page into our hearts. So it's going to be very important that we use a good Bible study um, translation um, for our Bible reference. Okay, Bible study nugget number three is create a trendy writing tool for note taking. So you want to always use an effective tool for note taking. In Habakkuk, um, second chapter, verse two, it says, Then the Lord answered me, Write the vision, make it clear on tables so that anyone can read it quickly. We want to be able to write down what God is saying to us at our Bible study and our quiet time. We don't want to miss the voice of the Lord. So, you know, we're human. We may forget what the Lord said. So you definitely want to um, have some writing utensils, a writing tool to write down what God is saying to you. And again, you may ask, well, why? Why do we need to do that? Because we want to be reminded of what God is telling us. Um, if and when it's um, possible for us to share it with others, we want to be able to pull out our notebook and say, well, hey, this is what God told me. This is what God revealed to me during our, our quiet time. I mean, it's just a good rule of thumb to have a, um, a writing utensil and, and be able to take notes into it so you can meditate on what God has given you. A lot of people um, sometimes do a, a study plan for writing um, for Bible study. And you may do just a Bible study template. Um, and the ones on the following screens um, will say, like it says Bible study at the top. And then you have your the passage that you studied. And you have um, some pondering moments there, um, some questions and verses to read. A lot of people do the SOAP Bible study method, which is write out your scripture. 
um, make an observation of that scripture or passage. You want to apply it. That means apply it to your life or how it can be applied, the application of that. And then prayer, write out a prayer to the Lord and ask him to help you with the application of those scriptures. Another tool that people use is the GROW method. And it's the G is going to be for invite. You're going to greet and invite God into your quiet time. So again, pray. And then R is going to be read. Uh, read the verse silently or out loud a few times. O, observe what God is saying. Observe what stood out in the verses. And then W, write. Write out the verse, your observations and prayer. So we see that writing and praying goes hand in hand with our Bible study time. Um, and if you see these out there on, on the screen here, you can find them at the bottom of these templates. You can find uh, where I pull these from. So I gave credit to um, everyone who created these templates because I did not. Their websites are at the bottom. Um, so you can go and pull those and maybe use those in your personal Bible study time or, you know, give you an idea of what to use. Um, a lot of people do an actual planner on the screens coming up. You'll see a planner that people do for Bible study, a planner or a binder or a journal. So you need to have an effective writing utensil, um, you know, pen, paper, writing items so that you can kind of, I guess, organize your thoughts and organize what the Lord is saying. And then you can study because it is Bible study. So you can study those passages. You can study those notes so you can be effective for the kingdom and also for yourself. So our last nugget, and thank you guys for hanging in here with me, um, is nugget number four, use your time wisely. We need to know that this is our time where we come to meet God. This is our time where we want to come to connect with God. Um, we want to stay prayerful and have an open ear to hear God. Um, so again, this is whether it's your personal quiet time, your personal Bible study, or your group Bible study, this is where you're expecting to meet God. Um, and on the screen you said, you see that I said, um, you want to have fluid boundaries during this time. And what that means is that you don't want to be so rigid in this time. A lot of people may ask me, you know, what do you do during your quiet Bible study or your quiet personal time with God? I do a lot of things. One thing I always do is I always have music playing um, that kind of set the atmosphere, worship music um, playing so I can hear the words of scripture being sung to me. And then, of course, we always pray, but I wait and see which direction that God wants me to go in. And I bring all of my tools that we j just discussed. I bring that in my prayer room, my quiet room with me. But there's a lot of times that I don't even use them because I'm in there with God and he may move me into another direction. I may just listen and meditate to the music. I may read one verse and meditate um, and God will speak to me. Sometimes I don't say a word. I just pray internally and then I just feel the washing of the Holy Spirit come over me. And then it's just a quiet, sweet moment between me and God through the actions of the Holy Spirit. There are some times that, I mean, there is a strong audible voice of the Lord speaking to me. And I, and as he's speaking, I'm writing. Um, then it's sometimes it's like school. It's just a true study. A couple of verses. I'll write those verses out. Um, I'll apply them to my life. Um, it, and it's a true study. A lot of uh, my lessons come from that time that I share with you guys. So that's the importance of writing those things down. But also too, like I said, you don't want to be rigid. Have your tools available. Have everything that we talked about um, in this session available with you um, during that time. But leave it up to God in the way he wants to lead you. That's why we pray. Because we not only we want to pray and, and make sure we're on the right track, but we want God to know, hey, God, I have a plan, but I didn't plan so much that I didn't include you. 
So we definitely want to make sure that we use our time wisely, uh, make sure we're prepared, but make sure that we have fluid lines of boundaries that we can shift. And the time frame, you may be in there for an hour, you may be in there for five minutes, you may be in there for five hours, whatever. You want to make sure that you're seeking God and that he is the center of, of, of this project. And so on the screen, it says why, because we don't want to hinder communication with God. We want to receive everything he has for us. This is a personal one-on-one time that is the foundation of our relationship with God. So that's pretty much what it is. This is a personal time with God, whether it's in a group setting, whether it's in a private one-on-one setting. This is a time that we want to get what we need from God. We want him to bless us and we want to bless him back through worship and letting him know that he's at the forefront in everything, especially during our quiet study time with him. So the next step then is to put this plan to practice if it be God's will for you. Um, This is something that I felt that the Lord wanted me to share. But again, this is just, um, you know, a blueprint, if you will, but it's not set in stone. This is just a guide. You can add, take away, delete, or do nothing. Um, This is just something that I wanted to share with you guys. But those of you who asked or may ask or may want to know, well, God, which direction do you want me to go? in my quiet time in my Bible study. Some of you may, God may be moving on your heart to start a Bible study, a group Bible study. A lot of you, God may be moving on you at this time to invite others into your home and start a Bible study. And this may be a good example of how to do that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe. Um, Send me some um, shout outs, I guess, or let me know if there's anything that you want me to discuss so that I can bring it before the Lord to see if that's, you know, something that he wants me to have a topic on. Um, So put your comments below. Uh, You can submit your email address. I'll submit mine and we can correspond from there. But let's just end in in prayer. Father, uh, our Lord Jesus, uh, we just thank you right now. We thank you for everything you've done for us. We thank you for this wonderful day. God, please forgive us for our sins that we've committed knowingly and unknowingly. And God, we ask right now that you will help us. Help us in our quiet time, in our prayer time, in our Bible study time. Because God, we want you to be pleased in everything that we do. And use these tools, God, as a ministry and um, that we will uh, get more and more of you. But we want you to get the glory, God, even in our study time, because we know that you're at the forefront of our life. We understand that the study time is a precious moment between you and I. And God, we just want you to be pleased. God, help us right now, God, and just bless the people that come to my channel and listen to anything that I have to say. Let them know that it's only because of you that I'm able to speak with authority and with clear understanding. We thank you, Jesus, right now. We love you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, that's it. I'll talk to you guys soon, and um, have a great day. Bye.